Okay? So, nag on na our recording. So, before we will start, let us have a prayer first. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Prayer to Saint Rita. O glorious Saint Rita, you who did share in a marvelous manner the sorrowful passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, give me the grace to suffer in patience the miseries of this life and be my refuge in all my necessities, Amen. Saint Rita, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our course, Practical good Research 2. Good afternoon. So this is actually our first time meeting each other, like real time, no, because I wasn't able to meet with you last week because I had um, your research training. So you only <laughs> saw me in a recording. So right now, no, um, supposedly I'm going to like start a more introduction, introduction, no, but we will not waste time on that anymore anyway. Um, time that we can really know each other. For now, we will just focus on what is essential, and that is, of course, learning what are the qualities of quantitative research. I know you have already an idea on lesson one since I've uploaded that to Quipper or in Quipper. I do hope a lot of you uh, was able to read the module and the PowerPoint. Um, anyway, if you have like your mga doubts or like questions with regards to this um course no it's okay naman po kay i know not everyone are you know have an idea or ha like have a background with when it comes to research so the main purpose why i really want to start you know before you submitting your module is that if you have like things that you would like to clear out then and i will be able to explain that um in our lesson it would really help you in answering your module now, before we start, no, um, again, my name is Ms. Saibel Ann Ramirez. I will be your practical research two teacher for the semester. Hopefully, I'm still um, your inquiries and investigations teacher in the second semester because inquiries and investigations is just a continuation of practical research two. What we're going to plan is that hopefully you will be able to finish chapter one and chapter two of your research paper so that we can continue chapter three and four in the second semester. Why do we need to um, deal with this kind of approach? Now, it's really important that we need to start our writing our research paper as early as the first semester because, again, writing a research paper, most especially to beginners, is not really that easy and it really takes a lot of time. No, not only the data gathering part, but also, you know, making the entire research paper, you know, ang pag, pag construct palandaan og title, magpalibog na, you no, know, sa introduction palandaan, medyo isud-lisud po siya, no, sinugdanan palang gani, no, na na yung mga, mga concerns ang mga students. So, as much as possible, we'd like to start early so that we will also be able to finish early. At the same time, we can have also, you know, an opportunity to have like a pre-oral and final oral defense. Why is this important? Now, I believe that it is important also for you to have this kind of skill because once you reach in college, research will always be there. Mo uh, most especially that since you are, um, you know, ABM and TVL students, no, when you reach in college, you'll always be thesis writing. No, dilir na ingun nga sa senior high ra siya. Actually, it has to be integrated in college. Mamugay na siya pinakal sa college life na because we cannot actually graduate without passing our our final oral defense. At the same time, if you would like to pursue postgraduate studies, no like masters in business, or for example, if you like to pursue like information technology, then there is actually MIT, no masters in information technology. Postgraduate studies actually require you to do um like a research paper, no and actually in other countries. Very advanced ka ayo siya class kay tungod. Other countries are doing research papers, no, as early as high school, as early as no, even elementary, you know. And in the Philippines, mongod, this kind of culture was not really integrated. That's why a lot of when you 
talk about research kalabanan sa mga bata dili ginahan kapuyan sila because it was not really integrated to our culture we don't have this kind of culture where we appreciate research and even no scientific processes so that is why you know my job here is to help you appreciate the importance madala jud ni siya until mag college mo nga di mo maglisod ba Once you are asked to make a research paper, you already have an idea or a background in senior high. Okay, um, actually, the students can speak for themselves. No, when when if if you ask them, no, nga if na abadit sila na katon nasa subject, and what is nice is you know even the new principal sees how you know good the students are because they were able to publish their research papers, and hopefully you too. No, by the end of you know, the school year, you will also be able to write one. And I believe everyone can do it, no? Because when I started working with the senior high school students, previous batches before you, did sila yung anak po kabihasa, no? They were not really that good. Puno nag-struggle po biya sila. Because wala man siya, bansay pag sinugdanan pa lang, no? Naadyo na yung part nga, beginner pa siya ka, no? But with patience, dedication, as long as mo commit lang tanan, wala yung magpa-ugtas nga member, No, kay Mojuna kung pinakay sa tanan na yung magpaugtas nga, nga, what they call this, group member, nga dili mo seen, dili mo cooperate, mag dila na siya nga point po nga, too much na po siya, no. So, as long as mo cooperate na tanan, they meet deadlines, no, mo committed sila sa klase, mo attend og write shops, because in this class, we are going to divide it, into two separate co ano, activities. We're going to have like the synchronous classes wherein I will also be teaching you like in theory, ano, background of research, what are variables, what are different kinds of research na may quantitative, qualitative, na po different types of quantitative, no, na atay experimental and non-experimental research. Now, also, it is vital that you will have right shops. Kay, sa imang good class, magsigira kong story on sa nang background sa research. Nga kung pasulat tun tamo, ano mo yung idea asa magsugod, magstruggle jud mo, ang ending ana, ang outcome sa inyong paper, dili maayo. Pero ano mo yung idea, di ba? So, ang atong buhaton, kay para at least ba, I will also be with you in every step of the way, in the process of writing the research paper. You will have synchronous classes where I will teach you like, like theories or background about research. And then on, okay, I'll turn it na ba? On the second week, We uh we are also going to start with the right shopper and I will teach you how to find research topics. Like kung ano siya, demo jud siya para kabalo jud mong ah dire dire ko mo agto. Oh so demo jud siya and then ipakit on po tama mong actual ng research paper para na may idea on sa structure. So be teaching you on sa an pag plaster. Like this is chapter one. First part of chapter one is introduction. This is dapat on say on say content sa chapter one. Pat sa introduction na global perspective. Sa second ano so sa first paragraph na global perspective. Sa second paragraph sa introduction na ay regional perspective, local perspective, gap in the literature, and then the rational. So kana ganing kana ganing ihan ay jud na ko tanan nga makabalum mo asa mo sugod, no asa magpakita o resources at the same time unsa ang structure niya. Kaya it would be useless if I'm just going to throw you like, oh, this is the types of research, etc., etc., make a research title. And that's it, no? Nga ikaw, asa mo kumangita, magpalibog na lang ka sa Google, which is, dili po siya filtered. It's not, the audience is not specifically targeted to researchers, unlike Google Scholar, and unlike Library Genesis. So that is why, nga, mag-write shop dyan ta. So expected na siya nga there will be write shops or demo where I will teach you how to write and also lessons like this where I will be also teaching you like a bit of background about research. Okay? So let's proceed. Now, welcome to unit one. I got carried away back there, no? Because I would like you to have like an idea about what to expect in this subject because I know it's going to be a lot, but don't worry. We'll take baby steps going there, no? You don't have to be, don't be overwhelmed because I will be with you in every step of the way, no? If the other batches can do it, so can you, no? I believe nga, wala man siya. Because I believe nga, dili ingon nga, ko ano, I, I believe everyone has like that capacity to to do this. No, kay ang uban may mga sila sa last batch, ma'am. No, no. Each batch has a different set of skills, and I believe nga 
tanan sila can hone that different skill in research no dili man jud ingon nga ko ano anyone can do research if given um the correct kind of guidance and if there are actually people who are going to help you so ayo jud mo gahadlo mo jud na siya ang inyo jud kahadlo kan sa ko kung masuko na jud ko nga dili mo cooperate tanan mo jud na siya no cooperation jud akong kinahanglanon and commitment okay so unit 1 is nature of quantitative research and we are going to learn about because there are three lessons in unit 1 so we're going to start first with lesson one, which is qualities of quantitative research. Now, I would like to ask if numbers can be used to describe a phenomena in nature. So, wait lang. I will be... Lang for a while, ha? Okay, medyo ga ko ayun plus. I cannot actually see you, so I'm going to use my my phone to Okay. I forgot to join ahead. So I'll be using my phone. Okay, so I will be calling um, Amy Rel. Are you around? Is this Amy Rel or Emerald? You can unmute your microphone. Hello? Miss Emerald? Or if Miss Emerald is not available, I'll call um, Amory. Amory or Amory? Hello? Miss Amory, you can unmute your microphone. Ma'am. Okay. So I would like to ask you, how can numbers describe a phenomena or a certain situation? Now, for example, I would like you to describe, you know, first day of class. Can you, can you describe that kind of situation using numbers? Or how can you describe that kind of situation using numbers? In your own opinion lang. Pwede rapod bisaya. Can you describe a certain situation or a phenomena using numbers? I take, for example, uh, the elections or you know, a wedding or, you know, a graduation. Can you, can you describe a certain phenomena using numbers? Oh, I see. How about... Irene, can Irene hear me? Yes, ma'am. So, um, for you, no, para ni mo, can you describe a certain situation like, for example, elections or graduation? Can you can you describe that kind of scenario or that situation using numbers? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so in, in what way, man? Oh, sige lang, sige lang, it's okay ra. But in in what way man ta no, nagsulti man ka nga, yes mama, ma describe na to siya mo sa phenomenon like an election using numbers. In what way man ta maka describe ana nga nga situation? If I were to describe the elections, sige sige dai. By using numbers ma'am kana, dra ni mo mahibaw-an ma'am kung pila ka book ang namboto ma'am kung pila ka book hmm. Wala, anong ba? Mm -hmm. Correct, no? So, kung pila ka buok ang koan, pila ka buok ang ni-vote ani nga certain candidate, pila ka buok ning vote ani nga pika sa candidate who is winning based on comparing, you know, number of votes. no Same can be said in like a graduation. You can even, you know, um, describe that. Okay, for example, how many ang ning graduate per per program, like sa BSTM, sa, sa education, no? Or for example, when siya nag-start, no? Um, 
pila ka buok ang ning atan, no? things like that, no. And it's possible that we can describe a phenomena using numbers, no. So thank you, Miss Irene, for that observation. Now, of course, no, it was actually clear, no. Gisulti naman po ni Miss Irene nga pwede jud nato siya ma describe in a way nga wherein we can get actual data like the number of votes or, for example, the number of attendees, no, uh, the number of graduates per program baron no? so in any situation wherein there are people involved or situation we can actually describe that using numbers no and that is what quantitative research is all about so for us to further deepen our knowledge in research um i will be introducing to you the different learning objectives first so by the end of this lesson you should be able but not limited to do the following you'll be able to describe the characteristics of quantitative research you'll be able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of quantitative research discuss the different kinds of quantitative research and evaluate topics that can be studied quantitatively so since we are talking about quantitative research no of course din na nimosulod ang data no um i don't know if qualitative study was introduced to you in the first semester but the difference between the two is that in qualitative it's more of a narrative where it, there are fewer participants atong ikutang uh, ginahan ko ma makuha sa perception sa osaka front liner or health worker nagatrabaho sa riyad nga uh, who is also experiencing misogyny or like for example misogyny or kanang for example kanaganing Koan, um, sexism. When we talk about sexism, kanaganing mas mas dili respected ang mga babae ng workers kaysa lalaki because no men would think they are inferior. No so nga na ang example. No I would like to get the perception of female um, health workers in Riyadh about misogyny or sexism. No about kanang inequality between men and women. So Muna siya, no, you're going to take like five or ten um, participants and then interview them. And whatever unsa lang isulti in that interview, sa mga questions yung mong prepare muna siya ang imuhang kwaan o marag basis for your interpretation. So it's more of a narrative kind, ang qualitative. Quali ha, qualitative. But the quantitative research, on the other hand, is more on numerical data. Meaning we rely on numbers no, or actual data no, to describe or just interpret the phenomenon. So you have, for example, I would like to know how many, um, what do you call this, students, for example, na akong i-compare, na ay mga sujanti 50 ka buok ang ni atan og summer class, na ay other 50 nga wala ni atan og summer class. I would like to know, kinsa to sa number of students or pilakabok number of students ang makapasar ani nga subject, no, regardless if they attend the summer class or not or for example more comparative siya nga type nga we're in i would like to know if asa ang mas dako score katong ni atan og summer class or wala ni atan og summer class kung dako og scores ang ni atan og summer class meaning dako jud kay impact the eye as preparatory sa bata before siya mo skwela sa opening kay minina na siya background knowledge sa summer class nga pwede niya ma-apply sa regular nga klase pwede ing ano no that's numerical data because you're actually comparing two datas, no? um, their test scores, no? and then, of course, you are getting like the same amount of people. Another example could be, I would like to know if ready ba ang Osaka Siyudad no? sa ing aning a kind of, like for example, ready ba ang San Carlos City to become an agritourism destination wherein we advertise no, agricultural um, attractions like, you know, farm resorts. Now, I would take like a criteria, like for example, ang criteria ana is attractions, accommodation, accessibility, amenities, and activities. Lima na siya kabuok aspects. I would like to know out of 500 people, pila kabuok ang ning agree, no, we are ready. Out of this five aspects, we're ready to become an agritourism destination, pila kabuok ang disagree. So, ihapon ni mo siya, no. That's quantitative kind of research. It's more on numerical, no, compared to qualitative nga, more on narrative rang. You're just going to interview, unsay lang isulti verbatim, you're going to write it, no. So, maon na siya. So, sasagi ko gisulti, no. So, before we will continue, I would just like to ask, um, 
Nabilin diri kay si Jessa and si Irene. I don't know if naapay la in. Oh, naapa. Wait lang. Ah, okay. Nag-hindi. Ay, sorry. So, na ah, si Anjali, Emerald. Okay. Si Althea. So, I'm going to ask Irene to describe Oh, asa diri. Kinsa diri ang TVL. Jessa. Ah, si Jessa. So, ABM ang rest. Okay. I don't know if Jessa can hear me, no, but I would like to this, uh, ask Jessa if she can describe their strand using words. So, meaning more on, like, dili ka pwede magamit ang numbers nga. There are 12 of us, ma'am, in the classroom. So, dili lang. Um, if you're going to describe using words, so siguro more on, like, attributes baron or characteristics of your group. Well, for the ABM, so I would like to ask Irene to describe your group using numbers. Okay, so purely numbers lang. Walay sagol nga characteristics baron or unsa. Basta using numbers, it could be like the age, like kalang age bracket sa inyuhang strand, like most of us are 16 to 18, or for example, how many are you in the class? Pila ka buklaki, pila ka bukbay. Basta using numbers. So I will give you siguro mga three minutes to think about it. So Jessa, I hope you got my instruction. Hello? Mr. Jessa? Can you hear me? Okay. So I'll give you three minutes how to describe your strand TVL using words. Just describe any lang. And then for the ABM, so Miss Irene, I would like you to describe your strand using numbers. So I'll give you siguro three minutes or less than three minutes and dali naman siya. Siguro mahatag ko o two na lang para mas dali. Okay, you will speak in vernacular, ha? Anyway, this is not a final oral defense yet. So, kanang kung unsa ra ang inyo hang, I know. We would like to see and compare you know, the difference between um, the two. Okay, so we have 44 seconds left. Okay, 20 seconds left. Okay, so we will start first with Miss Jessa. So, kindly you describe your strand TVL using words? You can unmute your microphone. Mom. Thanks, Mom. Yes, you, you can describe. Please describe your strand using words. 
How can you describe your strand TVL? No need for you to describe using numbers, ha? Like, 18 may kabuok sa classroom. Wala na to siya. Words lang. Go ahead, Miss Jessa. Good day, go ahead. You can speak in vernacular if you if you want. Anyway, you're not in your oral defense, man. So I won't really mind it yet. Miss Jessa. Hello? You can unmute your microphone. Yes, ma'am. Can you just describe once man lang imuhang marag perception sa imong grupo sa TVL? Kuan amo ang grupo, ma'am? Um, we're very friendly sa TVL. Um, we share a common interest in um, K-drama, all things like that. Don't just describe your group using words. You can share that to the group. Pwede po mga characteristics. Ngayon mong nabantayan. Go ahead, Ms. Ressa. We don't actually have all day. So you can... Share whatever it is that you think about TVL. Friendly. What else? What friendly lang? What what are the things that you can describe your strand? No, it's a perfect time to be proud of your strand, your group, because. I know you, you've observed a lot of things about your group. What else can you say about your strand? Other than surely there are other things and friendly that you can, you know, put in Bisaya on. Honestly, honestly, ma'am. Honestly. Uh... What else? So your, your, you think uh, your strand, no, uh, the students in your strand are honest and friendly. So pwede mo nabantayan. Add one more. What oh, loading, loading. Hmm? Pardon? Loading? Okay, so for Miss Jessa, no, Hello, she described she described her strand as friendly and honest. No, that's how she described that. No, using words. Now, how about for the ABM? How can you describe your group using numbers? So go ahead, Miss Irene. If I'm going to describe my strand, ma'am, I'm going to pick three numbers: eleven, hmm. two, and one. 11, mom, we have 11 girls in our strand and two because we only have two boys in our class. And one, and one mom, because our strand is united as one. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Miss Irene. Okay, let's try to compare you know, both groups. Now, when we think about... You know, um, Sa TVL, they describe it as friendly and honest. While sa ABM, they describe it as, you know, two boys, um, 11 girls, and then uh, one to know um, because they feel that they are united as one. So, what do you think? Pwede ka na ito i-insert ganit din sa, sa ABM pwede no nga. Ang ilang age bracket, kay most of the students there are within like 16 to 18 years old. Mabot ka na pa ba 16 sa grade 12? So, nasa, or, or 
17 to 19 years old, di ba? Pwede po natin na siya i-throw in there, no? Sa, sa description using numbers. Now, if I were to ask you, which do you think out of the two ang much more accurate and really represents each member of the group? Meaning, it's accurate, it's not based on an opinion. At the same time, um, okay, both of their answers are actually correct, no? Because you describe ni Jessa perfectly ang ilahang group based on her own perception, no? And how they see, uh, and how she sees it. And I know, no, her her classmates would agree as well. And Irene described her group according to how many are they in the classroom. Now, comparing each two, although both are correct answers, correct way of describing each group. Now, but Asa dira ang mas more accurate and really represents each member of the group. Like it really says about each member. It's very accurate. Kasi kimbali balihon pa na ni mom. Kasi kinsay mo ang pangotan on. Sakto jud siya. No? Regardless if it's part of the strand or not. Now I would like to ask um, Angeli. Um, ano ma'am? Describe missing numbers ma'am. Why do you think so? So describe using numbers. So why do you think so, Angeli? Kay biskan unsa on chat bali bali ma'am. Ma kan man siya accurate siya tanan ma'am kay kung unsa ang naa dito sa like things or gi describe ma'am mao man jud yang gi butang sa ano. Mm. Okay, so thank you Miss Angeli, you know. And that is actually correct. Now, I don't want to discredit Miss Jessa's um description no because that is also true no she finds her group honest and friendly and that is okay no but the thing is in research especially in quantitative we don't make room for subjective responses no or kind of subjective no way of you know describing a certain phenomena we really rely on the statistical side of it no which is more on numbers the actual data because when you think about subjective responses like i think mom this is beautiful i think this is you know attractive but what you see is what do you call this um sometimes beauty is relative sometimes our opinion is not the same opinion as other people other people would sometimes disagree and and that's pretty normal no because we have different perceptions based on our own like culture or upbringing or later no, we're, we're built differently that we think differently. That is why sometimes we don't really depend on subjective like responses, no, like opinions and all. Because in research, Mangod, we heavily rely on actual data. Like what I've said, no, parsa tong giingon po ni Miss Angelino, she really discussed it very well. Ngamsking bali bali yun pa ni mo na siya. Even if you ask someone, now, that is not part of ABM. To count how many girls and boys there are in, in their class, it will always be 11 and, and then 2. No? If you're going to ask them individually, pila ilang edad, oh, ilang bracket mo, pasok yun na siya sa 17 to 19, di ba? So, mas, although both are correct, na ko na siya i-discredit ang katong usano kay sakto man po to, but ang mas accurate lang yun, no? ang mas objective isang katong using numbers and that is what quantitative research is all about no so quantitative research deals with so thank you everyone for participating miss jessa miss angeli and miss irene okay so when we talk about quantitative research it really deals with numerical values and how they can describe a phenomenon or and for a relationship so again Diba? There are two different kinds of research. There is quality and quantitative. Qualitative is more on a narrative kind of side. Although, to ibuta nga, kuan mangod siya, diba? Mo interview ta, kuha ta sa perspective nila based on their experiences. And then, ato na siyang kuha on verbatim, Jude, meaning, unsa ilang isulti dito, mo opo na itong ibutang. Sometimes ganito, kung magbisaya sila, we have to translate it to English. Kaya, kung sa ilang isulat dira bisaya, ato siya isulat word for word, no? And then, it's more on the narrative kinds of side, no? Others would prefer qualitative because it's easier. If they look at the structure of qualitative research, it's actually quite shorter than quantitative and it doesn't deal with statistics. Although, na ama when there's statistics ginagmay, pero dili din siya pariya sa quantitative nga heavily relies on, on, on statistics. But as at bak lang sa qualitative, it looks easy, but when you execute it, lisod siya. Why? Because... 
of course, it's really quite sensitive, no? And sometimes when you observe people, na mga ibang nga qualitative research class nga dili ra interview, nga dili ra um, peer group discussion, na mga ibang qualitative study nga, you actually have to go to this certain area, observe their their behavior, or ikaw mo set up sa sa scenario, o nya imuha silang expose sa anak nga situation and you try to see if unsa ang ilahang response. Parang social experiment ba? Marang ganig nga na. If I will stress out these five people, I would like to know unsa ilahang common reaction. And sometimes it would take months of observation and very thorough steps. Mas kuti siya compared to quantitative. Kay, lisod mo siya, kuya, humungod siya, good. Kana ganing closely subjective siya kay more on the perception of your participant. Unlike sa quantitative nga, it's numerical. Ikaw mo sa questions. Ikaw mo sa pila kabuk ang mo answer. And it involves statistics. So very much more accurate, no? Accurate yung po si qualitative. Lisod lang siya kaayos siya. Naghan kaayos siya o steps needed. And it's very sensitive because it's the actual, you know, it's the actual responses of the, res of the participants. If you compare it to quantitative nga, you're just going to let them check yes or no, no? So, in quantitative research, it deals with numerical values. It heavily relies on statistics because, this, like what I've said, no? The results of, can statistically, can really um, be interpreted. Atong ibutang, balik pa na para masabta na ito, no? Kaya murag, kung ano makaitong gisuti ni Mamda. Atong balik ko ng example, ha? Um, for example, I'll deal with non-experimental lang para mas closer sa inyo. Ha, no? Some of you will not be going with experimental research. So, for example, non-experimental. Um, Ngahan ko makabalo, ma'am, if kaning specific na teaching method mas effective ba kaysa not applying the teaching method. So, for example, mag-conduct ko o review before and magpa-exam ko. Will that improve the scores of my students or not. But what if ipaagir na ko sila og test right away without the review? Is the results the same? Things like that. So, ang imuha nang i-measure is ang test scores nila, katong niagi sila og review before the quiz, or katong dito sila da yun og quiz. So, based on kung ra, no? Background knowledge ra ang ilahang basis. So, mo na imuha i-compare, imuha na imuha i-measure na statistics already. Or, for example, sa manham, um, I would like to evaluate, uh -huh. ginahan ako i-evaluate, ma'am, if ang ICT proficiency sa bata. So, out of, ato ibutang, kung man to, no? 13 ka buok ABM, 7 ka TVL. So, ako nang i-evaluate sila using a checklist if asa nila dira, pila ka buok sa ABM o pila ka buok sa TVL, ang na-ICT proficiency, meaning bansay, mo navigate o Google Docs, Google Sheets, or kanang kwan ba? Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, kabalo, na ay research skills, meaning kabalo siya, asa nga website, mangita o ref references, kabalo siya mo, what they call this, mo assess asa ang reliable information from the internet, kabalo siya mo gamit, o like simple lang nga, office tools, no? para sa itong uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, Microsoft Word, Kabalo siya mo gamit PowerPoint presentation. No? Kanang mga ingana ba? So, imagine na ko na pilas la kabuok nga based sa kong criteria ang kabalo ani nga na ICT proficiency or excellent og ICT proficiency. So, mara, ihapon na po na ni mo pila kabuok to ang ning, ning meet sa criteria no? based sa ilahang answer dan. O, so, Muna, ang imong i-measure dira is pila kabuok studyante ang na ICT proficiency and at what level from 1 to 10, at what level sila maayo sa ICT or sa computer. So, diba, that's numerical already. So, maingon siya nga, accurate po siya because you rely basically on numbers to tell you about the results, to tell you about the solution to the specific like problem that you are dealing with. No? At the same time, it would really also tell you about the situation of your topic, of your research. So, that's how it works. No? That's how quantitative research works. So, again, no, it's the go-to approach for scientific inquiry because of its ability to test a, th a theory or hypothesis. That is why, class, 
kung sa beginner pa lang daan, it's much more advisable to actually proceed with quantitative research. It's not until college or in the graduate school, like mag-master's or mag-PhD, ang required to proceed with qualitative. Kay again, it's so sensitive, it takes a lot of time, sometimes money, and you need to really choose the perfect participants for your experiment or interview. Mo na siya nga, dili pa kayo advisable ang qualitative research. If you know how to do quantitative, then surely you'll be able to do qualitative. So quantitative dyan na siya ang goes to approach jud always. No? And it's really easier, no? Listen lang siya lang taon, kinay statistics. But again, you're not alone in this process. You have your research advisor, statistician, in other universities, ganun, they have a grammarian to help them out with the structure of their thesis paper. So, kana siya, dali lang siya kaayo siya, no? Basta mo, follow lang siya mo sa step-by-step process. You read additional references, and then there is like a teacher to guide you at the same time. Um... You also read the research papers of other researchers na pariya sa imong study. So, dali naman dyan siya. Dugay lang dyan, kaayo siya, o sahay, maglabad imong ulo, no? Pero kung imo siya i-compare sa quali, uh, believe me when I say quantitative is really an easier um, approach in research. So, the basis of formulating and testing a theory or hypothesis, because that is what quantitative research do, are variables. Variables are actually like the center of your research. Other studies don't require variables. No nga daghan, no bangi duhara, independent o dependent. No iban daghan, no? Parsa ko, I have nine variables. No, because I have nine factors that I need to measure. But in your case, no, pwede man duha. Kung cause and effect in you ha, Cost-effect relationship pwede man o sa ka-independent and o sa ka-dependent variable. If descriptive, sometimes more than two. If it's correlational, like a relationship, that is two. No? Because one variable and another variable. So later on, you will also learn more about that. No? Kay, it's really important that from the very beginning of, of you know, conceptualizing your research title, you really need to identify already what are your variables. Because quantitative research is really unlike qualitative nga. In qualitative mang good, sometimes na, 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 na times class nga, mag-usab siya in, in the duration of making your paper. Sometimes ganit ka na ganit, gasulat na kasi mong qualitative paper, usubo ni mo mong hypothesis. Kay nana po yung bago nga, na-discover ka during your interview or observation. Usahin na, mag-usab sa imuhang methodology for sa quantitative directed na ano automatically once you're able, mabalay na ginimo sa tanan ma-identify na po dimo imo hang hypothesis ma-identify ni mo hang methods ma-identify na po dimo imo variables so mo na kalinot po sa quantitative so the variables are the you know the traits that you measure you describe or give meaning to an object phenomenon or group of people so variables are the ones that are usually identified. Mo siya ang mong identify sa imuhang research topic. Mo siya mong gina-examine, gina-describe, or even correlated to answer a specific scientific inquiry. Now, I'll give you an example of a variable. Variable at place or research. Take for example, I have this question in my head. Like, I would like to know if I'm going to expose two same plants planted in the same environment receiving same care if i'm going to expose these two two same plants ha pareha jud sila tanan pareha sila nga klase nga tanom pareha sila kadak a pareha pud sila og i call this no kakatampukon no nga dili dili malnourish ang usa so pareha sila very identical i would like to expose this two same plants to different colored lights let's say plant a will be exposed in a yellow light Plant B will be exposed in a red colored light. I would like to know if I'm going to expose these two same plants in different colored lights, mausab ba ilang growth? Asa diri ang mas dali mo tubo? Asa diri ang dili ano mo mo hinay no ang ilang tubo sa sa paggrow, no? So tubo sa paggrow redundant sa pagtubo nila, no? So ang plants and the lights there are actually the variables. Di ba, kaya naman scientific inquiry nung nga, gusto niyo mabalaan, if nabay pag-usab sa, and I change na sila hang growth, if you must lang expose sa different colored lights, ang imong gi-examine dira, o imong gi-identify, is unsa man, 
ang plant o ang lights. So, another example where we can identify the variables. For example, I would like to um, give two patients, no, sa diabetic sila nga patients no, with the same type of diabetes, same age, same gender, same weight, same height, no, almost identical. Now, they have the same type of diabetes, no? And I would like to know if the other uh, patient, si patient A, ako siyang tagaan o herbal ma treatment, and then si patient B, ako siyang tagaan o katong, mag, oh, synthetic man siya, no? Pero at least, um, mag-laboratory made siya nga koan. Pero laboratory made, kubi ng herbal. Pero anong dili siya herbal, no? Maraming synthetic kind of, like, sakto ba, no? Synthetic. Synthetic kind of, like, treatment. I would like to know if asa ang mas better o like, situation after a couple of months if I'm going to expose them to different kind of treatments. So after, like for example, two months, ako din examine if naabay improvement or wala between the two patients. So lain-lain sila treatment, no, they have the same kind of diabetes, same age, same height, same weight. Akong i-measure dira, is tapos sila same, you know, um, Lahi ba ang ilahang responses because they're exposed to different treatments. Take note, they're also eating the same kind of diet for two months. So parihas tanan, no? Mojo na ang constant, ang katulad ng treatment ang lahi. So ang variables dira is actually ang katulad treatment ng mga gi-apply, ang katulad different treatments ng mga gi-apply sa diabetic patients, and also ang katulad mga pasyente, tung duha ka buok. Because sila man lang gi-identify, sila man lang gi-examine to see if na improvement silang health or wala based on mong gihatang na treatment. So those are examples of variables. Now, the two, the two examples that I mentioned earlier are just examples of the independent and dependent variables. There are actually a lot of variables out there. There are quantitative variables that are commonly used in research, and there are also measuring variables like nominal, ordinal, ratio scale. I forgot the other one, so I will just, you know, I will just explain that in my other PowerPoint. No? Um, so, don't worry because in your module, I did not actually inject other kinds of variables, but I'm going to teach them to you for additional knowledge. Okay, for at least ba na ang may mabalaan nga lain po nga variables. Okay, so pinaka-common should class nga, yung module ng madunggan sa research is, they would really ask you, where is your independent variable? Where is your dependent variable? More na yung pinaka-common, especially if your approach is more on like correlational or like cause and effect kind of study. Ito. Descriptive sometimes has independent and dependent variable, but sometimes they have more than two. No, so um, the independent variable is the variable that is manipulated, especially in experiments. No, like what I gave you earlier. Yung two examples are an example of an experimental research, and it has an independent and dependent variable. So, si independent variable mo ni mong manipulate to see if nai mausab ni dependent variable. Si dependent variable, on the other hand, depends on the independent variable. Because if wala, wala ganit na manipulate si independent variable, then si dependent variable, dili mausab. Atag kong example. Hamsters na punta. So, for example, I have two hamsters. And these two hamsters are of the same kind of species. No? Because there are different kind of species sa hamster no? na may uh, na amay Roborovsky, na amay um, Syrian hamster, na amay Chinese hamster. So, for example, I'll be testing on the most common hamster, which is a Syrian. So, I have two same Syrian, Syrian hamsters. And these two Syrian hamsters, they are, they are of the same age, same litter, meaning they came from the same mother. So, basically, they're siblings. Same color, same weight, same age naman to, no? Same sa kadakoon, same gender. Both are female. At the same time, they are housed in the same environment. Meaning, ilahang balagi po yan, parehas dyan, no? Parehas o, like, beddings, parehas sila tubig ginainom, no? The quantity of food that they are receiving. Same dyan sila balay tanan, no? Same dyan siya. One thing that is different lang is their diet. Same sa katong tambal-tambal dyan po, no? O, silang diet. Why? Because... Hamster A will be given a fruit mix diet, so natural no fruits. Well, see, si hamster B um, will be given pellets, 
no kanang mga pellets nga mapalit ra sa agrivet to kanang ana ba now we will be giving the same weight so evasioning mo siya nga dapat patas no same weight and amount every day no until a month mo humayo siya sa kabulan and then we will test if na improvement silang memory so after na usa ka bulan na ning labay kwa oni mo duha hamster ipagi ni mo sa same maze and you will try to see if asa dira between the two hamsters ang dali ra makalusot sa maze now where is the independent and dependent variable there ang independent variable dira isang katong food kato imong i-manipulate to see if nay mausab diba kay imo mong i-manipulate ba lahi imong ihatag sa usa ang usa lahi pwede mo pagkaon ipakaon sa iya ha imo nang i-manipulate to see if nay mausab silang memory o sila ang brain growth while si dependent variable is of course ang mga hamster kay sila man ang mag-change ilahang memory or lang brain growth ang mag-change based on the food that is given to them so i na pag-identify oh, i'll give you another example now the number of invitations or no, sorry the number of thank you cards that i will be giving out will be only based on on the number of participants that have you know attended the wedding so ang independent variable dira is the number of participants although you did not manipulate them no but magbase mang good ang results sa number of thank you cards imong ihatag kung pila ra pud ang ning attend diba so dili ka ka determine sa number of thank you cards imong mahatag not unless if you determine first pila ka book ang ning attend so the independent variable there is the number of people who attended your like wedding and then the dependent variable there is the number of thank you cards so per minimum na ano, 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 no matter how tricky um, the situation or the topic may be always think the independent variable is the one that will be manipulated by the researcher or sometimes dili siya manipulate but it can cause change well si dependent variable ang mausab because of the independent variable so simple na siya no independent variable siya ang i-manipulate or usbon para na uh, or or na siya apply siya para mausab si dependent variable and si dependent variable ang mausab based sa um, effect ni independent variable so number na siya cause and effect kind of relationship no so ang cause si independent variable ang effect si dependent variable so is that clear students subtan ra ang independent and dependent variable Hello, are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Asabtan na siya. Okay. So, before we will proceed with the characteristics, because uh, we will end with this, no, for this afternoon, uh, I will also introduce to you the different the other kinds of variables, no, because, but ting alam mo, nakadungog laki ko about discrete variable, ma'am, continuous variable, and I don't know what that is. Kabalo naman mo, ana, kabalo na mo, ana, kanang continuous variable, discrete variable control variable gito luan mo ani pa grade 11 if if your memory serves you right have you already know about these variables before yes ma'am marag na takol na na siya last year ma'am ay okay so you do have an idea on um discrete variable um Based on your memory, you know, what do you think of um, control variable? Kung sa man siya dila. Katong sa situation sa plants, no, katong exposed na ko siya sa same environment ang plants, pero lahi na sila og colored lights. So, asa man dito, Miss Angeli, ang control variable? Sa asa, ma'am? Like for example, di ba, um, ang duha ka plants, nga parehas yun silang duha, nga type of plant, type of size, tanan parehas yun sila, I will be planting them in the same environment. And then, they will be receiving the same soil, the same amount of water, every day. So, asa dira ang control variable. If ang independent variable dira is ang katong different colored lights, and si dependent variable is ang plant, kimo man na siya ang mag-usab, Asa dira ang control variable? Was it explained to you? 
Sige dahi, go ahead. Ang kan ma'am, ang uh, controllable ma'am kay ang water then so well. Mm-mm. Oh, that's correct. No, water and soil. Why do you think so, Miss Angeli? Kay mauman siya ang nag-ano sa duha ka object, ma'am. Okay. So, mauman siya ang murag um, nag-add o factor ba rin sa duha ka object. Now, um, actually, ang control variable is um, a certain part of the experiment or the study that really never changes. Hindi li siya mausab. So, was that explained to you when you were in grade 11? Ang kanang koan, kanang disc, uh, control variable, intervening. So that I may be also be, be able to know where to like fill in if na abay mga gaps and all. It's okay, you can be honest with me. Napa, natakol mo na siya, ma'am, pero nalimot lang ni ma'am ba? Kay... Oo, oh, 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 oh. dugay-dugay na po to siya. Sige lang. Okay, so thank you for your honesty. No, we will um, like have a recap when it comes to these variables. So this is important because maybe in, in one of these days, you will be starting with your research topic. At least you have an idea. When you identify your variables, kabalo ka if it's a discrete or continuous variable. So, no need for me to explain um, dependent and independent variable because we've already explained that one. So, we'll proceed with the other types of quantitative variables. So, I'll just be using no, my PowerPoint from um, my last year na class no, because actually, hey, ang structures ako ang lesson no, and then I decided to move to Quipper. Mo nang murag na usab na pudang ako ang pagplaster sa klase. Eh. Kay sa una, I, I make my own PowerPoints mong good. So, mora po to siya kung ginagamit sa class. But right now, I'm using Quipper so that na ay uniformity. At the same time, no, at least ma update na po ang um, lessons. So, ang naadi to sa Quipper is kulang. No, pero I like to fill that in. But you don't have to worry. This is not part of the module. No, um, the reason why I need to explain this to you is at least pang refresher lang. Okay, let's start with discrete variable. Now, when we talk about discrete variable, it assumes a distinct point on a scale. It means when you count something, it ends. And I'm rag, dili siya infinite. Like for example, I'm going to count these keys. So, may hap ko dili 1, 2, until 15, ato ibotang, huno rin sa 15. Meaning, dili siya ingon nga infinite. No nga, Way kaundangan. No matter how I count these keys, if di na ko ni siya dunga, dungagan, atong ibotang, masking the following year pa, no, wala rin ako ni siya gihilabtan, then the number of keys will still be the same. Meaning, ma mahuman rin siya kutub sa 15. That's discrete variable. Si continuous variable, on the other hand, can assume a continuous point scale rather than distinct points on a scale. An example of this could be because um, discrete variable can be... Uh, Time, oh, but I think continuous put si time. So, ang continuous variable is an example of that is age. So, atong age. Nga naman, um, I think for example, if I'm going to count my age, dili man good siya muundang dayon at 20. No? If I will be able to still live the following year, then dungag na po doko. Sana ka nang siya ay kaundangan ba? Uh, what else? Time can be an example of continuous variable because it keeps on. It doesn't stop. When you count something, it it never really ends. No? So, mo ang continuous variable. So, what else? So, may lain phenomena nga where we can consider a continuous variable. And di mo siya ma-easily count. So, mag more na imong i compare between the two. This uh, discrete variable. Like, for example, the coins on your pocket, if you're just going to count like three of them, it's always going to, to stop at three. No, it's not going to continue. But ang continuous variable, it keeps on continuing, like age, like time. After plan na po mula ba yung pila ka tuig, pila ka oras, no? You're older or ang time ning past na, sige na siya po siya, wala rin siya kaundangan. Ang control, ang control variable, on the other hand, is the variable that is held constant. Meaning, no matter... What you're going to do, no, you, you should not change it, no, because if you change this part 
this kind of variable in your study, it can really affect the results no, of your experiment. Par sa atong tanom, di ba? Dapat, to ensure jud ninay accuracy sa mo experiment nga expose nimo sa different colored lights you're going to expose them in the same kind of environment same soil same amount of water um same environment same temperature same weather tanan if mahimo no pero it's extraneous variable naman ang weather so dili siya pwede mausab kay once mausab na siya it can really affect the results of your study an example na pod no katong sa hamster di ba nga dili ni mo siya pwede nga duha ka hamster lain lain og edad lain lain og klase dapat same jud siya kay para dili maaffected ang results sa imong study no or even ko an pa na poy accuracy no and even the the environment where the hamster is living dapat pareha sila duha no kay kung lain lain sila then surely it's not accurate anymore kay Kung lahi yung balay, no, matakabalo ba sin? O sa mga factors po, anak, ano, mahalter ay yung memory um, growth is because wala stimulant or toys nga mutabang sa pag-stimulate sa brain sa hamster. Walang pikas na yung toys, no? And that's really important as well for, like, recreation sa mga animals. So, yung ana no, that's control variable. A variable that is held constant, no, and should not change. Ang intervening variable, on the other hand, is, um, you know, acts as a moderator between the independent and dependent variable. An example of this could be, you know, like, the independent variable could be poverty. And the dependent variable is, you know, um, imuhang lifespan. No? So, shorter ang lifespan if the more you are, you know. Pero I, I would like to disagree, no? Kaya kalabanan po biya sa gapoy o ko ano nga dili masyado kadaghan ilahang kwarta mas longer lives ba sila no kay gakaon na ba sila og vegetables pud compare sa naa sa should that pero you know this is just like an example for example sake ha but this is not factual because i believe although na may mga times nga poverty can be a cause of shorter lifespan pero napoy uban nga dili no so dili in siya ingon nga factual so for example sake no um like poverty could be the independent variable and then the dependent variable is no, like lifespan so the more nga pobre ang sa katao the more mo shorter ang yang lifespan why the intervening variable there is not dilim ko na siya bin reason should ang poverty you know the intervening variable that there that connects the two of them because there's always a gap in there and the one that fills that in is the intervening variable ang intervening variable dira is lack of access to proper healthcare because you are so poor that you cannot affo afford proper health care. That when you got sick, when you need surgery, you don't have like the means to pay for, for proper health care. Sad, sad but true. No? That could be the reason why you have a shorter lifespan. So, although poverty is, you know, like the independent variable there, but what connects it is ang katuna sa middle, which is lack of access to proper health care. Very deeper na siyang ako, ano. Let's have a more confident, um, relatable kind of, um, what do you call this? A relatable kind of, of content for intervening variable. Uh, let's say I'm going, to grow, uh, I'm going to grow koi fish. And if you're familiar with koi fish, they can really grow bigger than kon mas usaygan if you're going to release them to bigger freshwater ponds mas dagko pa jud sila no nga usay dako na jud kaayo ang ang koi fish now the independent variable there is the koi fish no and the dependent variable is their growth no so sorry ang independent variable dira is ang ilahang environment like ang kadakoon sa ilahang water no like sang pond kadakoon sa pond and then ilang food while ang um, Kuan, ang dependent variable is ang growth sa koi fish. So, yung mga manipulate nila isang kadakoon sa ilahang fish pond and also ang food yung mong ihatag sa ilaha. And then, ang kuan na na, ang dependent variable is ang koi fish, ang yung kadakoon. Ang intervening variable there that also fills in that gap is how frequently are you going to like feed them, na dapat constant ba siya, at the same time, ang treatment ni mo, kaya maski unsa pa nakadako ang pond, if, of course, dili siya limpiuhan, or for example, if ang pond itself is, wala siya gitaga like proper chemicals to make it like, suitable for the fish, then the fish is still going to die, or dili siya mo grow. 
So that can be the intervening variable. No, it's the link between the dependent, sorry, dependent and the independent variable. So extraneous variable, on the other hand, is if you cannot control this kind of variable, then it can really affect your study. What are the examples of extraneous variables? Take, for example, the weather. The weather is, is an act of God. You cannot actually control the weather, not unless if you are God. No? So if you cannot control the weather and you are conducting an experiment outside, then yeah, wala ka expect no kay supposedly my experiment is during a sunny day. If you're going to to expose this plant to this weather nga gaulan, nga, nga supposedly dili mo siya dapat maulanan, that could really affect the result of your experiment. And that's an extraneous variable. No because you cannot control it and if you cannot control it that can really affect the results of your study. So those are the some of the examples for quantitative variables. Let's now proceed to Measuring variables. Hang, hang akong PowerPoint. Kadali lang yun plus ha. Ay, okay. So, proceed to um, measuring variables. Ay, interval din. O, sa, sorry. So, there are four kinds of um, interior, uh, interior measuring variables. There are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio scale. So, si nominal is when you classify each variables according to like gender or religion ba na run, movie genre, brand, pwede, no? As long as you cluster them, you don't have to arrange them according to first, second, third, no? That's for ordinal scale. But when you classify them according to like genre, gender, or different like, characteristics, that is nominal. So, qualitative attribute ang iyahang kind of variable because it's based on its characteristic. So, kanisha is based on religion, kanisha based on gender, kanisha based on, o ano siya, classify na ko niya according to, um, on saman ha, according to theme baron, according to species. Oh, yung na, that's nominal. Ang ordinal scale, on the other hand, is, although yung po siya i-classify, but it is actually ranked. No? Like, for example, I'm going to rank them from highest to lowest. Or from least to greatest. Or for example, um, from first to last. No? So, muna siyang example for ordinal scale. No? From smallest to biggest. So, may ana. No? I-rank ni mo siya. And then, ang interval scale is, it doesn't have a true zero scale, unlike the ratio scale. So, Interval scales are numerical scales in which the exact difference between the two values are known. An example of that is it doesn't start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wala siya ka ng true 0 value ba? Unlike sa ratio scale nga mo. So good siya ka count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 na ko to ma'am kay 10 years ako dirigas stay. So yung ana, no mo na ang ratio. Ang interval lahi. Wala siya yung true zero scale. Meaning, muambak siya gani usahay. Like for example, somewhere between, kuan ma'am, um, ang edad ng mukalabanan is somewhere between 17 to 19 years old. O oh, in between. Somewhere between ana ma'am. Oh, that's an example of interval scale. Okay? So, wala siya yung true zero scale. While ang ratio scale on the other hand has a true zero, uh, ratio scale on the other hand has a true zero scale. So, or ang um, ratio variable, no? Wherein you count from the very beginning, it should 0, 1, 2, 3. Appeal man actually, like for example, years of service, no? Na may times ka, for press ako, no? Gaservisyo naman ko daan, dili abi nyo, bago pa kong hire nyo. If we're going to count it by years, dili ko kaabot og one year, kay mo pa man, pila pa man ka bulan, pila pa ko kasi man na dili go work. No? So, start ka from, uh, what is there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, 10 years ako dili, ma'am. So, 10 years. So, muna siya ang ratio scale. Okay? So, actually, out of all the measuring variables, it's only the ratio scale that has the properties of the nominal, ordinal, and interval scale. Okay? So, that's it for um, types of variables. Do you have any questions before we will proceed with our last topic? OT tarun no. Expect na sa research up. Pasensya ju kaayo. Um, I would just like to emphasize this one. When we talk about research, others would seem to think nga we can easily capsulize it within an hour. It's it's different. No, research cannot be capsulized in an hour. It's that broad. No, 
dili ni mo siya madala mugit pag pag actually katong nag training me imagine mo two days among training from eight to five dili pa siya enough to cover everything so I'm I'm really sorry if daytimes times kamo extend ko kay not only that we're running out of time but one hour is too short to cover a lot of things in research and di po ginahan nga ambakan ambak ambakan na to no kay dili na siya pwede research is a, is a scientific process and you have to take it like step by step judsha okay another thing um it comes to research is that you really have to meet the deadline and the timetable kay again kulang sug ayo ta og oras um the subject can be really demanding miskin ako no ko anan puta pero watay mahimo no um Dilimang guna siya dapat ato lamu lamu on. Kay, what's the point of committing to this subject if di nato siya tinud unun? So tinud anay dyan ni ato ah. No? Dilim lang for the sake na I'm just going to teach you and then leave you whatever it is. Kanyo makatunan. Kung gamay mo makatunan, di wala. Na, na, no, that's not how it works. No? The point is at the end of the school year, you really need to write a research paper jud. Na magamit jud siya nga worthy rin siya ma-archive sa library. That is why we're really exerting so much effort yeah, in making sure that not only you know the background of research, but you know how to write. So, pasensya lang, you'll be expecting a lot of like overtimes from this subject. So, mojo nang ibutang ko sa last period, no? Kaya mojo na ang time nga ma-extend ko sa high. So, labi na mag-write shop ta. You ask my previous students, sometimes it we would take like an hour and a half, sometimes two. And grabe, grabe yung pasensya sa mga bata, no? kay ko answer siya ay mo kahad dok no very demanding ni siya nga kind of subject but it would be very rewarding it is fruitful because the skills and the knowledge that you will be learning from this is really practical and important once you reach in college like you will already know what to do kay again knowing that the philippines has a very poor rate when it comes to research not a lot of people are motivated to do this and if mudungag pa jud ang problema nga pasagdaan na lang na to no samot na no nga we will produce graduates who are not critical thinkers who do not really know how to do a good research paper and that is not our goal our goal is of course since competence man to ang kuan dire so to na lang yung panindigan diba so mo ni siya no so balik <laughs> Let's now proceed to the characteristics of quantitative research. Please bear with me. This will just be quick. So there are four characteristics of quantitative research. We have controllability, general, generalizability, objectivity, and replicability. Now, in my original PowerPoint, there are actually seven of, of these, no, a plenary researcher, but we're just going to narrow it down to four. At the same time, we will find another date to compare qualitative and quanti. So, importante po na ito silang i-compare formally. Kaya para at least baka balo mo sa difference nilang duha. So, let's start first with controllability. Quantitative research should be in an environment where all variables are identified and can be controlled. That means that you have actually the ability to control. In, in what sense man nga na ay controllability sa quantitative? You actually have the ability to control how many questions you're going to provide per actually naman ay statistician ana no but you're going to control what kind of questions you're going to include in your survey questionnaire no although naman ay doka process in writing your survey questionnaire class na atay self made and um what, what is the other one self made and standardized kind of questionnaire ang standardized na questionnaire class is when you get a basis from another researcher to ibotang si Burkhardt and Medlik nag, nag conduct silag study on a potential of a city as an attraction or an events attraction ilang survey questionnaire is aligned sa kuang study and i would like to make use of his questionnaire nga ako siyang himog basis ako apog paghimo og questionnaire nako na now dili mo nako kopyahon tanan because that's plagiarism for academic integrity you are actually allowed to ask the, the author email ka nga, sir, I came across your research paper and I have read that your survey questionnaire is applicable sa kung study. Kay, very similar kita og, og topic, sir. If it's okay with you, I would like to make your research questionnaire as my basis sa ako ang survey questionnaire. Di na ko siya kopyahon, sir. Narakoy ko ang mga ginagmay dira niya kung i-rephrase to make it more of like 
my work, no? But since oh, ikaw man ang author, para na po kayo respeto ni mo, pwede sir nga, we can also discuss on sa mong opinions ako na himo nga questionnaire, if naka-oyun ba ka, or for example, if naka-gusto idungag. Oh. So that's an example of like um, a standardized questionnaire, meaning na anak kay basihan daan online, and then you try to change it to make it uh, as your own, similar sa imuha. So at least ba, you are still crediting uh, the original source. Ang self-made questionnaire is you make your survey questionnaire from scratch, no? Mana self-made. So, for example, ikaw mo drop si mong questions. Ikaw mo, mo kuan on say mga contents dira, on say unod say mong questions. That's okay because sometimes mo mana, no? Kay ang uban, um, dili sila ka yun sa questionnaire sa uban researchers. So, sila nila mo himo, silang kaugalingon nga, nga, nga survey questionnaire. Pero ang catch lang ana is you have to undergo that in a test of validity and test of reliability. Usa man ni silang duha ma'am. Ang test of validity is where you get five um, experts, for example akong study sa about education. So mukuha kog experts sa education nga mo evaluate sa ako ang survey questionnaire. Na na sila ko ana na sila mag checklist. Ko makita nila nga nakapasar ka no based ilang checklist nga maayo pag construct imong self-made questionnaire. Ilahan ang pasaron sa Validity test. So, pasar na ka sa validity test. That's test one. Test two is test of reliability. Ang test of reliability class is where you conduct a pilot test. So, many pilot tests. Mukuha kag 30 ka buok survey respondents na dili part sa imuhang original survey respondents. Diba, for example, mo survey man siyog ka, no? Pag humani mo sulat chapter one o two. Pero before ka mag-survey, agin mo test of reliability. Ako mga respondents mong good ma'am kay estudyante sa Santa Rita. So, mukuha ko og 30 ka book estudyante sa Santa Rita pero dili part sa kong original nga kuan kay. For example, akong respondents ra kay grade 12, ABM, TVL o GUMS. Walay labot ang STEM. Unya, mag-pilot testing man ko. So, dili ko mukuha og respondents gikan sa TVL, ABM o GUMS. Mukuha ko sa STEM. 30 ka buok para himuon na ko og respondents um, participants sa kung pilot testing. Unsay purpose na pilot testing sa test of reliability. Tagaan ni mo silag survey questionnaire, ilahang ansiran, lang tawo na ni mo if ang results from that pilot test is of course, no, consistent and very favorable ang results. Kaya if ever gani nga medyo walay consistency, no, meaning either naglibog ang mga mga respondents kay hindi sila kasabot si mga questions, kapataka arag answer. O, so, po po na siya ang rason nga numahag pong po sa test of reliability or sa 50-50, no, tumatunga. No, so, po po na siya ang imuhang agyan. Nga mo agi man, og test of validity, ma'am, og test of reliability, ako ang self-made questionnaire na ako bitaw gahi mo, ani and I assure man po nga, nagkunda ko og, like, nag-research ko ni Daan sa internet. Okay man siya, pero of course, no, it's a self-made questionnaire. You made that from scratch. And as researchers, we don't have like a name yet in the field of, of research. No? Okay. We haven't published anything yet. And of course, so for accuracy's sake, we really need to undergo that in a test of validity and test of reliability to see if it's free from flaws, walay sayop, walay error, not only grammatical errors, but even ang content itself, mo align ba siya sa mong statement of the problem? Kaya take note, wala ka nagkuhag idea from other researchers. Ikaw naghimo sa mong kaugalingon. So, to assure nga, wala na siya yung mga sayop, sakto ang content sa mong survey questionnaire, mo agi dyan na siya test of validity and test of reliability. Where does controllability um, relates to all of that? Controllability in the sense that you are able to control what are the questions in your questionnaire? Unsa man ang mga items akong ibutang dire. Unlike sa qualitative, di ba? Ang qualitative is wala kay control. Munguta na abi ko interview ko ani nga participant. Qualitative niha, munguta na ko ani nga participant. Kung unsa niyang i-respond sa ako ah, regardless of negative or positive na siya or king simang pa na siya, ako na i-take into account unsa iyang gisulat verbatim. Even i translate pa jud nako na siya no. Kay wala koy power to actually influence unsa ang iyahang response. Sa quantitative, you actually can control unsa ang respond ni, dili mo siya yung control ni influence ni mo siya, no? but you can control the responses in your survey questionnaire. It could be yes or no, 
na ilang ansiran or 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, dili sila pwede ka-answer o maybe, kay yes or no, raman yung mong gibutan dira. So, either of the two, they have to answer that. no And even the content of your question ang mag-identify unsa yung mong isulod sa per question. Another, you can even control the number of respondents that you are going to get. Not unless if it's ko ano. Like, for example, if you're going to employ um, convenience sampling, so, sa convenience sampling is, kung kinsa ang fitted nga, nga respondent sa kung study, mo na ko ilang kwaon. An example of that is sa kuang study, no? And akong study is related to tourism. So, dapat ang mga respondent sa kong kwaon are also related to tourism. Like those who are working in the city tourism office, tourists, working in hotels, working in travel agency, working in events company. So, kanang mga example pa lang da, I know, that's a convenient sampling. You are able to select who are your respondents. Or if you if you cannot select that, no, randomly, pwede mang kakadetermine pila ka buok ang imong kwaon. So, it's controlled. no. You can even select randomly or conveniently kinsa ang imong i-participant sa imong study. And that's controllability. And you can even identify the variables, no? Marso kung gisulti ni nga, you have actually um, the ability to control, uh, to control and to even identify your variables from the beginning of your study. Next is generalizability. Wow, that's mouthful. It's from a larger sample size that the results are based on as a representative of the population. I'll give an example of generalizability. So, for example, my study is uh, kung mga respondents ang tanan, par, uh, tanan, ta, uh, tanan resident sa Barangay 1. Example rin niha. For example, ang, ang population sa Barangay 1 is 3,000. Unya, it would be impractical for me to conduct survey sa 3,000 kabuktao. Nga tag sa tagsaon, siya ako sila taga survey questionnaire. No. We will just be getting like a sample size from the entire population of Barangay 1. So, for example, I will be employing Slovin's formula. So, na compute na ko. Out of 3,000, ang ako arang kong dira, example na niha kay Margie, kong kong na ko ni, 1,5 rabi akong kwa o niyo, katunga na no. So, nga no 1,5, because of course, the bigger the sample size, the more accurate the responses are. Kay, for example, ato ibutang, 3,000 ang total, uh, total population, o niya, kwa o niyo ilahang response on you know, vaccines, if they have a positive um, feedback on vaccines or not, kung pangunta na ko, duha ka buok, tawura sa barangay 1 out of 3,000, do you think that's accurate? No. No, because these two people cannot accurately represent the entire population of barangay 1. So the bigger the sample size, like 1,5 ka buok, ako ang i-interview, ma'am, if, if okay ba sila sa vaccine or dili then the more accurate your responses will be, you know, because they can really represent the entire population. So that's generalizability. So sometimes we get our sample size based on the total, uh, total, total market, kung ano yung marketing, total um, sample size. Mayroon po nagsak kung ano marketing, no, kung akad ko, mukha na ka o target market from your total market. So yung anak na siya, no, um, para dili po siya lisod on your part. Kaya imagine nyo mag survey kag 3,000. Kabo kapuya na ka anak, diba? It's too impractical. So, kaya siya ka o ka ng representative nga population. no Or like a sample size that will represent the entire population. So, kaya na, Slovan's formula, for, formula, formula rin na siya. So, pwede 1,500 or 1,000 ra ang ma-represent sa population. Next is, we're almost done, no? Duhan na lang. Next is objectivity. So, the results of the data are observable and measurable using structured instruments. And it really undergoes a certain process or phases. It's not biased in research, in quantitative research. We heavily rely on data, statistical data. And, of course, um, it's objective. No? Mala kong gisulti sa inyo, ha? And it Actually, no, the, the, the results of the data are measurable using structured instruments. Like what I've said, actually, I'm going to ask you no? Maghimo ka questionnaire, mo undergo ka og test of reliability, test of validity, to, sure nga, uh, to make sure nga free from errors. At the same time, you also need to make like a good structured research um, instrument or survey questionnaire to accurately gather data. No? So, observable 
and measurable ang data because of a very well structured survey questionnaire. Dinan ako explain ang katong paagi ha, katong akong gi-explain kanina which is katong mo undergo jud imong survey questionnaire sa test of validity and test of reliability to ensure it's free from error and to also make sure that it can accurately gather data. Online jud imong study. Last one is replicability. So the research study should be replicable by other teams of researchers that will eventually come up with similar outcomes. Now, this was not really that appreciated no sa una, but the importance of this is in research magod, it has to be a continuous process. Kanaganing ang link sa knowledge is mag continue na Japan siya. Diba ikaw, when you, uh, sooner or later, no, when you are going to start writing your own paper, mangita man ka sa Google Scholar o mga research researches no or research papers na related sa imong study unya mubasa ka dito para makuha idea kaya pa lang alone there is actually like a passing of ko na margani gip 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 pass na ang mag knowledge sa imong habang ay okay nag study si Burkhart and Medlik ani nga nga theory and then nakita na ko nga murag useful man sa akong study oy so kwao na ko ni siya to also be part of my study ako siyang insight ako siyang reference now Ang gibuhat ni Burkhardt and Medlik, ako na siyang i-improve. So, di ba, there is, um, di ba siya yung i-replicate per continuous siya. Ito. Or, for example, naman na yung study, and then nakita ni mo nga, nag-study ko about events tourism, but wala na ko diri na-study ang, ang ako na is potentiality. Wala na ko na-study ang readiness. Oh, potentiality raw, wala yung readiness. Uh, mayahang marag, kung unsa na siya ka-ready ang usaka lugar, ang potential is, Lahi from readiness, ha? So, for example, akong na-study ra is about potentiality, but I haven't explored readiness yet, no topic about readiness, or study about readiness of a city. So, I suggest sa mga future researchers nga makabasa sa ako ang thesis, nga they can also explore topics about readiness of a city as a events tourism destination. So, na ay continuous ko, ay, no, na ay link, no? So, importante na siya, even in your recommendations, sa kabutang man dira nga, you highly recommend to the future researchers to make your research paper as a basis for them to conduct a study in other other topics related to, or other, you know, topics related sa imuha research baron. Okay? So, murag, imuha po na siya, o kuan ba, murag, tabang po ni na sa future researchers. And how can we ensure that our study is replicable or ka na pwede siya masumpayan sa uban. Um, you can do that by making sure that your study is interesting. Interesting in the sense nga, it's unique, it's doable. I'm asking, saan pa na ka-unique o interesting yung topic? If it's not doable, it's not practical, it's not realistic, then it's it's not feasible, no? Dilitin mo siya mabuhat. But if it's doable, sa imuha pala, no? Sa, sa student level lang, doable siya, practical, um, at the same time, ko siya, maghamit jud siya, then pwede jud kayo siya masumpayan. I'll give you an example. Muag, di ba, ang study sa previous years is about like, ICT proficiency, about the effects of online distance learning towards the mental health of the students. Sa ABM is about business, no? Um, Pandemic-related nga business. So, kung mabasa ka, na, sumpayo na lang jud to ninyo. Pwede man mo, himo basis ang ilang study if you start your own study. So, ilang study is replicable because ikuha man mo ilahang study as your as your basis sa imuha pod nga study. Okay? So, maura na siya. That's quite lengthy, no? Um, we will just continue next meeting on the strengths of quantitative research and its weaknesses. There are actually a lot, but this is just narrowed down to three. Do you have any questions before we will end? So, sorry for the... I really need to extend 30 minutes, no? Do you have any questions before you will end this discussion? Okay. So, um, I do hope next meeting, obay obay na ang mo attend, no? Kay, there's a really, really a lot to unpack in this subject. And sometimes one good explain that that's how broad research is so I do apologize if I may like talk in very quick 
kung ano kayo na ko, um, ang train of thought nga, sige, nagpadayan, padayan ba? Um, anyway, if there are still things that are unclear to you, you can just re-watch this recording. Pwede nyo slow down if you weren't able to like, really catch up on everything. And anyway, no, importante man ani is, at least ba, if, if there are things that are unclear to you, I will really commit to recording my classes. Kaya understand research is not an easy subject. So, I, I do hope you learned from me today. And I do hope nga you got something, although nga medyo nag-extend ta og, og time. No? So, do you have koan? Nakasabot mo sa ato ang lesson for this afternoon? Yes, ma'am. Nakasabot na na. Okay, so thank you so much for that. Um, so before we will end, I know you don't have any questions. If you do have questions at the end of this, like, topic, no, pwede man mo ka message sa ako, ha? Anyway, um, this recording will be uploaded in YouTube this evening. I will just share to you the link later on. And then also, I will include this in your quipper. I will be extending the deadline because we haven't finished the entire lesson one yet. So we will just extend the deadline until next week, Friday. So we were allowed, Mendi, I, to extend as much as we can as long as we're able to finish the lesson. Okay? Yeah, di po, madalag usaka, usaka oras, di po, tinuodan siya class, no? Because sa una, naabot should make three hours. Um, di liman three hours straight, no? We were able to meet with the students three times a week. So three hours should, no? Daganjo kayo may og progress. Karon we really need to adapt to the change. No? We have shorter hours in teaching and that doesn't actually favor with my subject, in favor with my subject because my subject entails a lot of time. So, I really would like to thank you for your patience and I understand the, the connection is not really so good this afternoon due to the weather and I'm really quite thankful that there are still students now that were able to participate in this class. Okay, so before we'll end, let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Kurasha Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Most especially nowadays that we have um, a Delta variant here in San Carlos City. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion, grant them health in minds and body, Strengthen their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, once again, thank you so much everyone for participating in today's class. I do hope to see a lot more people in next week's class. So deadline for module 1 will be extended until next week. Thank you so much everyone. See you next week. Um, Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.